welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about something a little bit different. I'm not going to do a scrapbook process video, but what I'm going to talk about is why I choose to use Creative Memory products. And I'm going to do kind of a little review on some other types of albums. I'm not going to do name brand specific albums, but just styles and types of of different albums that I've tried over the years and why I decided not to use those and come back to using Creative Memory albums exclusively. This is my personal review. Everybody has their own style and their own technique and their own reasons for why they use what they use. So, but I was asked by a couple people the difference between the different albums. And so I thought, oh, I might as well put this up as a video because um, I think that the information that I learned might be helpful to somebody. So let me turn the camera around and I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are. And on my desk, what I have is my, my first completed album that I ever did. I started off my Creative Memories journey with going to a home party, like so many of us did, and falling in love with the, the idea of scrapbooking and the product right away. And then I continued scrapbooking. It was at the beginning of 1998. So I do apologize for the glare that we're gonna see because I do have page protectors on all of these pages. So yeah, I started um, at a, went to a party and fell in love with Creative Memories. And from that point on, I just continuously went to crops and um, enjoyed my, my time with my friend and other scrapbookers. So it was a, such a really good time me. And at, at that moment, you know, of course, we're taught that we scrapbook, we should scrapbook chronologically and, and lay our albums out in that kind of order. And I did that for, for many, many years. I continued using this same process. So, so over, yeah, over. I, I love that. We used to go to crops all the time. You know, that's where we would learn new ideas and buy all the fun stuff, yeah, the tools and the stickers and everything. And I love that part. And then as time went on and I became a busy mom of three children, then of course my scrapbooking time dwindled and I didn't have as much time as I did, as I once did. So, but I would still pull out all my stuff several times a year and work on pages whenever I could. Then as time went on, new products were hitting the market and kind of stepped away a little from creative memories and trying to, you know, trying out new products and new items. Then fast forward to 2014, 2015, somewhere around there. I was, you know, really down to only scrapbooking once or twice a year. It's very frustrating. I had everything packed in a closet. I'd have to pull everything out just to work on a page or two, trying to figure out where I left off, write down a list of supplies, and of course go to the store and buy more, more stuff. <laughs> and then by the time I got ready to scrapbook, I was like too tired and not in a creative mood at all. So I started to not get a lot of scrapbooking done. And somewhere around that time of 2014, 15, I felt like scrapbooking was becoming more of a chore for me. I felt like I would doing the same things over and over and over again. I start my books in January and then end them in December. And I kept going through the motions and doing the same, felt like I was doing the same pages over and over and over again. Do, always doing Christmas, always doing Easter. And of course, that's what I wanted to do, but I always felt like I had to do it because it was the next page in my book. Somewhere around that time, I started to slow down a little bit and kind of took a step back and realized why am I slowing down? And then I jump forward to my next phase. But, but before I go on with that, I do want to pause here and talk more specifically about this particular album. So what I like about these early Creative Memory albums is that here I am in about the middle of the book and you'll see how it lies nice and flat. I love it. There's really a little bit of a dip, but not much right there. You flip toward the front and again, it's laying still pretty flat and even toward the really front. Let's see if I can go to the, here we go. This is two pages in and it, even though it's kind of raised up here on my table, it's still really flat. 
That's the, one of the huge things I absolutely loved about Creative Memory albums. But it took me a long time to get to that point to realize what it was I loved. But honestly, what I didn't love was the fact that I had to scrapbook chronologically. So at this point of my journey, I was starting to realize I love the albums, but I didn't love the actual process of having that, that pressure of feeling like, oh, my next page, my next page, has to be Disneyland or my next page has to be somebody's birthday. You know, I, I like to, I wanted the freedom of scrapbooking whenever and whatever I felt like. Okay. But let's look some more at this album. So this album is 24 years old and um, you'll see on the bottom here, there is a little bit of wear and that's just probably paint rub off from it being on a moved around on different shelves. This is my oldest album. So it is the one that's looked at most often for whatever reason. I pull this one out more often than any of my other ones. I think I like to go back and look at some of my page designs back in the day. But overall, the album is still in really good shape. And the pages are still all intact. To me, it's still it's still beautiful. It's there's 45 pages in this book. So I feel like Maybe I'm getting close to um, maximum capacity, but it's it held up. It held up all this time with uh, 45 pages in there. So laying flat, it's all one size. It's as thick here on the left as it is on the right. And to me, that later on in my journey, I realized how important that really was. Okay, so hang on and we'll jump forward to 2017. Okay, so we're back. And we're moving forward now to 2017 when I've decided that I truly love this hobby of scrapbooking. I love all the processes of it, the shopping, <laughs> the creating the pages and, and the organizing all of it. But what I was having a hard time with was my album choices. I've decided now at this point that I want to start scrapbooking randomly that I don't want to feel trapped or confined by having to go chronologically. So if it's fall and I want to scrap fall, then I go find fall photos and I scrap them. And but it kind of posed a little bit of a problem using the Creative Memories album because I had always been trained that you have to go in chronological order. So that was really hard mindset to get past. So I decided to try out some different albums. So even though it's 2017, I was working in a 2005 album because, you know, I was a little behind. And, um, and so I went to this style album. I tried out this three ring binder and I thought this be the end all be all. This was fix my mojo problem and, and get me back into scrapbooking. And it did because I liked the freedom that I could create a page and just slide it right on in. I didn't have to worry about whether it's in the right order or not. Now I do keep my books still by the year and within each year they're still in chronological order, but I don't scrapbook in that way. So here's New Year's um, Eve. We're still in the winter. So we went to the snow and then we well, happened to go to the aquarium, but that was also during winter break at school. And then we go right into some springtime activities. And so I still keep my books in chronological order, but I guarantee I did not scrap these in chronological order. So what I do was I would just um, start putting them into the album. And then the great thing about this album was that you can move them around. So if something all of a sudden came up, I could pull this one out, put in the correct page, and then put this one and move this one down in the book. I keep a list, a running list in a journal of all the events for each year. And then I check them off as I go by. I, I note if they're going to be a one page or a two page. So, so I do know what order things are going to be in. I found that over the years, I, um, I do about the same amount of photos and the same amount of pages per year. Okay. So let's look at this, this three ring binder type album. Okay, this one is pretty big and I'm not gonna lie, it is super, super heavy. <laughs> and I actually completed four of this style of album. So I feel like 
my process was working, I was getting pages done and I was truly enjoy the creation part of it. But when I put everything together, this book is heavy and there is coincidentally 45 pages in this book, just like in the Creative Memories book I just showed you. And so here we go, here's the album. So what I also started doing in 20, around 2017, 2016, somewhere around there, I started adding dimension to my pages. Okay, so I started popping stuff up and using foam and puffy stickers and you know getting all that texture into my albums and I loved it. I love that part and I think that's wonderful, but it does add bulk to your album. So you need to really think about that because this book is so heavy that I actually dropped this once and the whole thing popped open and all the pages just went flying out. So that wasn't really fun to handle. I had to put everything back in it, you know, wrinkled a couple pages, nothing, nothing big. I don't, I don't mind that. I mean, but I, I but it's okay. That part didn't bother me, but what you're going to see, this is actually opened right to a great page because this is a prime example of what happens in this book. And especially if it's one that gets flipped through quite often and see what happened was the page protector ripped right out binder and from their three ring art that probably probably that was because I dropped it and it ripped it. And of course I exchanged, had more page protectors. I could change it and put it out and exchange it and um, put it in a new album. But you'll see here at first, I even tried to reinforce it with a reinforcer sticker, but that didn't even work. So I think the album itself just got way too heavy. And especially for these right here in the center. So those are the first couple things I started noticing is that it's bigger, it's heavier, and the pages don't hold up um, as well. Okay, because this album is only a couple years old, right? So I made this in 2017 and it's 2022. So this one's only five years old and I'm feeling like I need to move all these pages into another um, album. Okay, so let's look at a couple other things about this three ring album. So it is longer than a normal than my other albums. So it does hang off the shelf. I have to find a specific shelf to put this on. And I have one shelf in our house that these fit somewhat nicely on and that's a bookcase up in my master bedroom. So those four albums are sitting up there by themselves while all other albums are down in my hall closet because they fit nicely on a standard shelf size. So these hang off. They also have, you'll see here, let me flip it over. You'll see here that it has these metal tabs and this one is rounded, but I've had others that were more pointy. When I did have this on a shelf in the living room, I slid it off one time and it's it, not this one. I think it was the other one with the pointy um, edge. It scratched out furniture. And in fact, I'll scoop this up. You can see that this one has a big tear in it because I was sliding the other book in and the metal edge caught this book and, and tore it. So there's one other thing that happens with this album. And when I raised it up to show you this end, let me show you what happens at the bottom. That happens. The pages start to slide out. It makes it so difficult to handle the album because whenever I take it off the shelf, I have to make sure to grab the bottom and then slide it out ever so gently. So it's not rubbing against the other album and tearing it. Pages are so heavy that they just fall out the bottoms. And with that and all the other things that I mentioned, I decided it was time to start looking for a new album. That, and so that'll bring me to the next album that I would like to show you. I'll put this one away and I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are moving forward, starting to look for another album. And I looked into a postbound album. So here we are about 2020 or 2021. I decided to start looking for postbound albums and to see what I can find in that area. So first thing is I opened up, let's see, this is, you know, about a third of the way in and I love it. It's lying nice and flat, just like I like it. It, I was, I'm extremely happy about that, but I have to tell you, this is not the first album I tried. I tried a couple albums. I tried several different page protectors. I was going back and forth to the store. I made a couple returns in the process because I just couldn't work with it. What I learned was that um, the page protector 
really makes a difference. So there are some page protectors that are just slightly too small. You have to trim your paper and I was never good at that. I would, I would do the whole layout and then go to put it in the album and realized I didn't trim it first. And so now I'm stuck and I had to trim off like a quarter of an inch or more to get it into the album. And then when I did, it would, it would buckle up and definitely wasn't laying flat. So I could not do that one at all. That just cut into my time way too much and just was um, overall frustrating. So what I, so what I did learn was that you have to look for these kind of um, page protectors that have a little bit of a gusset right there and then it helps the page to lay flat. So that made a huge difference. So I got those and I liked it. I like the flexibility of this album. I can still, they load from the top and you can take them out and move your pages around if you need to. You know, I do try and set up my album so I don't have to do that, but I liked the flexibility that I can do it if I want to. So let's look at the size of this album. This is a 2006 and this album has 24 pages. Now I did 44 pages in this year, but this album would only hold 24 pages because what happened when I finally got all 44 pages into the book, it did something like this and it just expanded this one side, the right hand side was just open wide like that while the left side was pushed tight. It just sprung open like that and I couldn't even get it onto my shelf with my other albums. So at that point I had no other option but to go back to the store and buy one more album and I split my album into two volumes. And honestly, that's the first time in all these years that I've had to split an album into two different volumes and I didn't want to do that. I'm, I want to get, if I can, unless it's just some odd year, but I seem to be very consistent on the number of pages that I produce each year that um, I want to try and keep it to one if I can. But this particular year now has two sitting on my shelf. So that was the first thing that I discovered that I didn't like. Um, a couple other things, the post for me personally, this system is very difficult to use. If you do have to add pages, my recommendation would be put all your blank pages in before you put your actual completed page in because then that you can probably get in about 25 page protectors and then screw these in and don't unscrew them if you have, unless you absolutely have to because it is just a, a hard task to put these put more pages in. You have to, I feel like it takes two people, one to push down and the other one to um, twist and make and screw this and make the um, adjustment. So I didn't like that either. I find these are very difficult to work with and um, I like, don't want to have to always have two people around just to put my photo album together. So that was the second thing that I didn't like. And then the last thing was this binding. The binding is way too short. It's constantly popping out like all the time it's popping out. If I take this off the shelf, it looks pretty well. It's on the shelf, but if I take it off the shelf to look at it, the binding is popping off. Wasn't what I wanted either. And so on the other one, I actually put in some hot glue in there and held it. So hopefully that'll work. But this one is only um, a couple years old, so I'm not really sure how it's going to hold up yet. So I guess time will tell. But you know, now that it's all together and I have the two volumes, then I guess I'm going to keep this one the way it is. But going through that process made me realize that I just can't, I was just having a hard time finding an album that I truly loved. So that's when I decided to take another look at Creative Memories. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back and we're now like at the end of 2021 in the fall of 2021 and I am completely frustrated with all the albums that I've been using for the last few years and I'm on a quest to find the perfect album. <laughs> and so that led me back to creative memory. So over the years, I still was buy products once in a while, you know, their paper, I, I can't say enough about their paper, their stickers, their embellishments are all top quality. And I, I've known that and I've bought over the years, I still would buy here and there as well as their tools. Now their tools are just timeless and they last forever. Um, but you know what, that's all, 
another video as well, right? So let's talk about the album. So I started looking at their albums and really thought I really should give it another try. Even if I have to, you know, sit down and map out my whole album ahead of time, I felt like I could do that and I could still um, scrap the way I wanted to. But then when I did some more diving and I learned about the top loading pages, I thought, oh, let me try this. This is going to probably answer all of my situations, right? So that if you haven't seen the top loading pages before, they're just like the three ring binder and the post bound binder that you can slide your pages in and out through the top. So that gives me the flexibility I'm looking for in wanting to scrap in any order that I want to. Scrap those pages when I want to, but I wanna be able to insert them and move them around if I have to. So you'll see here, this book, I went ahead and I put the three packs of pages in. So I put 36 pages in, and you can also see I do have some dimension on the pages already. So it's kinda of hard to tell right away how this is gonna hold up because I'm not completely done with it. But you can see it looks like it's gonna keep its shape and it's gonna be equal on the left and on the right, okay? But I do have to, you know, still finish the album to give it the true test. I find like with the strap system, once I get all my pages in, everything is as thick as it's gonna be, then I can adjust the flaps even more. Okay, so does it lay flat here in the front? Now the front of the album, no, there is a slight difference in the album between the pages, but I feel like this one is not too bad to hold up. But I also feel like, again, that once I get the pages in and tighten up the straps, then it should sit fine, okay? Because as you go through the album and you're getting into the center of the album, then it's sitting more and more flush, okay? Which I really like. So you can see here that I have a, a long way to go before this album is completely finished. Okay, but so so here we are at the end of 2021 and I thought, you know, I wanna try out these albums. Now, I'll be completely honest, you know, when it comes to the price point, yes, going to a big box store is going to probably seem and appear to be cheaper, but is it really? Because now I have albums that I want to redo the page protectors are falling out a few years later. I have two albums now instead of one. So that was an additional expense. So I feel like, you know, yeah, the price point might be higher up front, but in the long run, I'm gonna be much happier with my overall album. So so here I am, I'm back home. <laughs> I, I'm back, I feel like life made a whole complete circle. And not only that, but in December, I became a Creative Memories advisor and I'm just loving it. I feel like if I'm gonna spend the money on the albums and all the pretty stuff, then I might as well pay myself back, right? Um, so I, I spend it and then I, I get it back as a commission. So it's kind of like a win-win for me. I'm really enjoying it. I love my album. I At this point in time, I don't have anything negative to say, but maybe, you know, I'll come back in a year or so and give an update, but right now this is working perfectly for what I want. I feel like Creative Memories just totally hit the nail on the head with these pages and it totally brought me back as not only a user, but as an advisor as well. So that wraps up my, my video for today on my album choices. And again, please, I know that this is a personal choice and that you all have your own opinions, but you know, go ahead in the comments, Tell me, tell me what kind of albums that you prefer and why. Let me know. Let me know if I, was I missing something on the other style albums? Let me know. Let me know what you think. And if you love creative memory albums like I do, then go ahead and comment about that. I'd love to hear that as well. Okay. Well, until next time, take care and bye-bye.